so the reason why Xenoblade Chronicles 1 was beaten last stream before continuing on with Xenoblade Chronicles 2 in this series is because at the end of Xenoblade Chronicles 1, we get to see the origin of the universe of Xenoblade Chronicles 1, which shows Klaus, who would later become Zanza, essentially from that space station, destroying the Earth. And there's my dog with her squeaky toy that you can hear over there. But there was Klaus that was in that space station around the Earth that essentially used it to destroy the Earth and the universe and recreate a new universe, which became the world of Xenoblade Chronicles 1. So, basically, I beat Xenoblade Chronicles 1 because that vision won't mean anything it, that Rex just had, if you haven't seen Xenoblade Chronicles 1, how it ends. Which is why Xenoblade 1 is over already, and why the rest of this series is just 2 in Torna. Like, my original plan was to have both Xenoblade 1 and 2 both go to, like, chapter 10 until the end. But then when I remembered, like, oh, Rex has that vision that only means something, that only clicks into place if you've seen the ending of Xenoblade 1, I decided to end Xenoblade 1 a bit sooner than 2. So that right there is the moment where it straight up confirms that the two games are connected. It doesn't explain how yet, but Rex just had a vision of Klaus destroying and remaking the universe. Just as Rex, not, not as, just as Rex, just as Shulk was shown by beating Xenoblade Chronicles 1 and defeating Zanza by Elvis. Except this time it was the third Aegis Sword that showed Rex this vision, though he has no idea what it means. As well, one of the things that we saw there was this machine that had three slots to it that were each shaped the same shape as the Aegis's core crystal as well. We already know that there's two Aegises of Pyra slash Mithra and Malos, but then what's the third one doing there? As well, if we also, now that we know for sure that they're connected, Xenoblade 1 and 2 with that confirmation there, if you want to also take into account, in the world of Xenoblade 1, there are three Monados, if we want to use that magic number of three. There's Zanza, Maynath, and Elvis as the three Monados. If you want to think about the three slots of that machine there that are Aegis Core Crystal shaped, whereas here there's only Pyra slash Mithra and Malos. So... Yeah, and yeah, Nia's new design- well, her blade design there. She's the only character where you can switch between being blade and driver, which I'll show here in a sec. But, but yeah, and yeah, that's, a, that's that sword there. The third Aegis sword. That's what that thing there is. The third sword. So there's the Monado. Uh, directions, there's the Monado. And there's the true Aegis sword. But yeah. Yeah, must, yeah, definitely is really important. I mean, if I wanted to put the most important sword to Xenoblade 1 on the border, then that would be the true Monado instead of the regular Monado, as we've now seen the end of Xenoblade 1, and that's like, you know, the most powerful Monado of that universe, and Shulk's kind of true sword is Elvis's sword. As opposed to that, which is Zanz's sword, but that's the most iconic for Xenoblade 1, so I threw it there. <laughs> my dog is going crazy back there. Hey, you want to hand me your toy, crazy dog? Want me to throw it? <laughs> anyway, um, what are we going to do from here on out? There's no point hanging around here. It's only going to make us feel worse. Let's head back to Fonset and talk there. Agreed. Let's get going then. We'll get somewhere comfortable and then think about the hard stuff. Can you relax, silly doggy? Hey? Hey, is crazy? Can you take it easy? Can you take it easy and chill, baby? Want me to throw it again? <laughs> Silly doggy woggy. Yeah, let's move that up a bit. Can you relax? Can you relax for a bit? Anyway, um, let's go ahead and let's put Rex up front again is what we'll do. And then we'll have, let's put more, I guess, the tank for a little bit. Let's switch things up. So I took uh, Pyra out because I'm not supposed to have her right now. It's, I just have her because of New Game Plus, pretty much. And what are you doing, Silly doggy? <laughs> Seeing what's over there? Like, I only have her because of New Game Plus, so I didn't include her in the party since she's not there canonically. But, now that I can actually have another blade, I figure I'll do that. Let's put Telos into that slot. Do everything for you. Rock. Rock into this slot. Pleased so, now that it's been revealed that Nia is a flesh eater, like, we- Going through Spirit Crucible Elpis, we learned quite a bit- What are, what are you doing, hey? What do you want, huh? Hmm? It's silly doggy. Huh? What? Huh? What's up with you? Hey? How are you doing? 
What's with you wanting attention right now? Usually you're not that attention-centered of a dog. Usually you don't care that much about that. You usually don't care that much about being pet. You're usually a pretty antisocial dog who's like, leave me alone unless you want to play with me. Hey? Hey, what you doing now? Hey, what? Let's not let my laptop go off the edge there. Hey, what you doing? Hey? What's gotten into you? Why do you want attention all of a sudden, huh? What's up with that? If you want to hop on the couch back there to relax, you can, but I don't think you're ready for the end of the day yet, are you? Huh? What you think? You want to hop on the couch back there? You want to hop up there and relax? No, not yet, but you're going to be all happy here. Hey, can you relax? Can you relax for a bit? I'll play with you later. <laughs> oh, man. Apparently she wants some attention right now. <laughs> anyway, so... It was just revealed that Nia is not only a blade, but a flesh eater. So, as was mentioned earlier in the game, flesh eaters are blades who have been fused with human cells. So they're like part blade, part human. So, when their driver dies, they're not gonna die anymore. Because they're like part human, so they don't go back to being their core crystal. They just live out like a regular life and die the way a person would. They don't go back to their core crystal. Yada yada. They don't become titans, because as we've learned earlier, blades eventually become titans. So flesh eaters never become titans since they just have like a normal death. Like anyone else. But they have an extended lifetime though, because they're... Because they're still like part blade. And we have actually met a flesh eater as... A uh, supporting character earlier in this journey and that was Cole or Minoth in chapter 3 who was the dude who was like writing the plays in that theater who basically gave you his blade weapon and was like take this to a Malthus he was once my driver and Minoth like he's not in that good of shape from being a flesh eater anymore but he's lived a, free, a pretty darn long time considering he was around during the events of Torn of the Golden Country so 500 years ago so yeah, extended lifetime quite a bit. And he says that he's like one of the failed cases, like one of the cursed ones of being a flesh eater. One of the ones where the experiment did not turn out all that well. And he's lived over 500 years, so you know. <laughs> extended lifetimes flesh eaters have, for sure. So, as Nia was talking about her backstory there, she talked about how she once had a sister. And her father... It was just her sister, like her older sister, her father and her, and they were kind of like lords in Torgoth, basically, and Gormoth, stuff like that. And her sister started getting really sick, and their father basically spent the whole fortune trying to find a cure that didn't come around. So she eventually died, and during the cutscene where we were showing the flashback, the father was like, part of her lives in you now. So what wasn't directly said, but basically what happened, is he basically made Nia become a flesh eater by taking in part of Nia's sister. In fact, maybe it was maybe it was Nia's sister who was really named Nia and he just wanted Nia to be called that afterwards because after Nia became a flesh eater, her father was like a part like she lives on inside you and there were like the flashbacks where he was like Nia, call me father. So that seems to imply that maybe it was like Nia's dead sister who was really called Nia, like the actual human one, like because she was a blade, so she was either the blade to the person who was called her father or the blade to the person that she called her older sister. One of the two, something like that. But when she had passed away, her father, who had gotten rid of like their entire fortune trying to save her, was still wasn't ready to lose her. So that's basically why he made Nia become a flesh eater, kind of give up her just being a blade and become a flesh eater instead by taking in part of his daughter who was about to die there. So in his eyes, that was her living on within the blade here who probably, if I had to guess, probably then became Nia. I imagine maybe she had a different name first, but I imagine if the father was like that crazy and was like, Nia, call me father after that, thinking that his daughter was alive within her. Something tells me the daughter's name was Nia, not the blade. And that's how Nia got her name. If I had to guess, that's what it would be. So that's how she became a flesh eater. And then like the father died shortly after that and Dromark was his blade and Nia was able to awaken Dromark because flesh eater, part human, part blade. So the part human of her is able to, you know, be a driver. 
And then she basically went on the run from the Praetorium because the Praetorium was like, screw flesh eaters, let's freaking, let's like catch them and lock them away. And that, and they managed to catch Nia and kind of put her in a cell. And then that's when Jin came and like killed all the guards and basically offered Nia another chance at life. And that's how Nia wound up with Jin and Malos at the beginning of the game. But, but yeah, learning this backstory of Nia is really cool. So yeah, flesh eaters can act both as blades and as driver, so here she is as a driver, but if I hit Y here, she's the one driver that I could say make Nia a blade, and then boopity boppity, I have four drivers here instead of five, and then on Rex here, I can go ahead and boopity bop. Showtime. So Nia is the one character in the game who is both a blade and a driver. Oh, so that's what that's for. I guess so, apparently. And yeah, her her specials here are pretty good, or like her passive abilities, like periodically restores 8 HP to entire party while at max affinity, and max affinity is not hard to get. Adds 25% chance of restoring 12 HP after taking a hit, and restores 12% of HP dealt after a successful auto attack. So basically, she's a pretty crazy healer, and she's actually the only blade that Rex can use to have an actual team heal art. So... Like, Rex can put on a whole bunch of different blades, but even if you put on healing blades, like ones with knuckle claws, for example. The most he can do with healing is dropping HP potions. He's not like Nia or Morag where they can have healing blades that actually do a full team heal. So the Catalyst Scimitar is the name of her weapon. And that's the only weapon that Rex can have that actually gives a full team heal like that. So he gets HP potions like other healing blades they typically get. But this is the only blade that you can really put on Rex, where he actually has a full team heal like that. So you can essentially put Nia on Rex to make Rex your new healer. In a sense. So... So yeah. So Nia, the one character who's both a driver and a blade in the game. So a whole bunch of stuff for you to max out as a driver with her like chart there. With whatever the thing is called, the affinity chart. And the blade affinity, okay, it's called affinity chart with both. So Nia is the one character that has two affinity charts for you to max out. The freaking blade one and the driver one. So Nia kind of takes like the most character investment, you know? I haven't done anything in hidden affinity here in a while. But yeah. And yeah, the dog there, can you stop being adorable trying to play one of the greatest series he's ever made? I know, right? But yeah, you love her blade design. I know, right? It's so cool and mystical looking. One of my favorite designs about her is her sword. So when it's like, for example, Rex's sword or the Aegis sword, when it's not in use, or even take the Monado, for example, the Monado, that sword over there. When it's not in use, it's closed like that. But when it's in use, it's opened up and the blade comes out. Or with Rex's blade, when he's not using it, it's closed. Let's take Pyra's sword, for example, for Rex's blade. When it's not used, it's closed. And then when he starts using it, a whole bunch of flaps start opening up and flames start coming out, you know? With Nia's blade, when it's not being used, it looks like a very slim kind of blade like that, that has the kind of water kind of flower design around it. Like there's life growing from it. Like she's very much a healing blade based on, you know, life and stuff like that, which is why there's very much a plant design around the sword. But once she starts using it, that blade in the center extends out to basically as far as the flowers go to instead of being like a thin and like short quick sword, like a character like Marth might have, for example, and it turns into a more heavy blade that you swing around with like blood force, like Ike might have with Ragnell, for example, if I'm going to use Fire Emblem characters as examples. So yeah, so you usually only really get to see that during cutscenes. Kind of thing. So yeah, Nia's now my blade on Rex since we don't have Pyro slash. What the heck is that? A graphical glitch? What the heck is going on with the sword there? Why is it all black? Is that is that a freaking graphical glitch? Is the game bugging out? Well, so much for showing the sword right now. That that is that is not right. Um, I don't know why it looks like that. That's a I've never seen that before. But. But yeah, so Nia can only be used on Rex, but as a flesh eater, presumably she can basically be the blade to anyone that she wants to be. So yeah, her ears are also a lot crazier <laughs> in her blade design. And I love like the robes, they're so wavy and cool. But, but yeah, and she's also very glowy, like the sides of the legs, for example, or even the stuff on the cloak. Very glowy indeed. I love the art style. Also, I only have two drivers on my team right now. I better put someone else in. Um, 
Who else are we gonna put in here? But yeah, Khan's Buster Sword is still better. Maybe. Also, wait, 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 wait. Who do I want to put in? Zeke or Tora? Mora can be my tank right now. Then Rex can be like my healer with Nia. And then Zeke can be my attacker. So how about we do that? Um, let's include Zeke. Is what we're going to do. So... Yeah, her robes are definitely way better programmed than Ghostface and DBD. Absolutely. I also love how long her hair gets as well and how it moves along with the robes. Like, look at the... Like, look at the smoothness of that. Like, as I'm turning a little bit, it's getting a little bit crazy. But if I just turn around like that... Like, they look like they're acting the way that they should, you know? Like, I'm just turning Rex here to get her to move around. But yeah, so you can only use Nia on Rex, and she's like the one blade that you can use to really make Rex a healer, apart from dropping HP potions. And... Yeah! <laughs> one of my favorite reveals of this game as well is the fact that Nia's a blade, or more specifically, a flesh eater. Uh, we need to mess around with the party a little bit here. My doggie is just sitting there and kind of staring at me. Now she's staring off to the side, pretending not to notice. Doing... Huh? I'm not sure what you want from me right now. But, but yeah, so if I go over Nia here, I can be ahead, go ahead and be like, oh, to driver form. And then all of a sudden you have five drivers again. And yeah, so there's probably a lot to do with Nia considering there's like the whole driver affinity chart here. Oh my goodness, I haven't even started here. She has so fewer like skill points here than like most characters. I'm just going to max out her regular affinity chart here. Looks like I can, hey, since I never did it before. Fight. Because time while she's a blade is time while that she's not getting experience as a driver. So, so you know, there's that. Um, look, everybody else is a finish. Oh, Zeke wasn't done? Dang it. But yeah, <laughs> I'm pretty sure not. I sure hope oh, not. Yeah. All right, let's complete these affinity charts. And we're getting overdrive protocols. Those are some of the hardest items in the game to get. You can, in theory, get unlimited of them. They're just really hard to get. What overdrive protocols let you do is change which driver a blade is assigned to, apart from, like, story blades. Like, so not main characters of the story, but, like, generic blades here. Typically, once you awaken, like, let's say Cosmos. I want Cosmos on Morag. I would have to use an overdrive protocol as, like, a one-time use consumable. But you can also release blades... Like getting rid of them and then you can then they're added to the pool of ones that you can get from core crystals again is another way that you can potentially do it but yeah dude what are my affinity charts looking like here okay that one's done and rex's is done so yeah with new game plus they added the second affinity chart is there anything i want to okay maybe i should boost okay i can't even do that right now i don't have enough points i was about to say maybe i should boost ether now that i actually have a healing blade on him which is nia oh my goodness it's all so expensive also expansive, man. What do I want to get here? Um, that's pretty nice. That's also really good. I like this one. Yes, this one, please. That wraps that up nicely. Yeah, the whole fact that they added a second affinity chart for New Game Plus, which I'm basically doing for the first time here, means there's so much more progression to do. What do I want to do here? Uh, that's not really that useful on Zeke. Um, that's really good and for a pretty oh, yeah. cheap price. But yeah, that protocol sounds bust if you know what to do. What, overdrive protocol for being able to rearrange blades? Because I mean, the blades that you get on characters, it's just random. Like when you go into the blade menu here and say Bond Blade, like what you get, <coughs> it's just going to be like random where it's either going to be a rare blade from like the available pool of characters or it's gonna be one of the generic like blades that's just randomly generated that has like the generic face and look and stuff like that like all the like it basically lets you do the setups that you want to do like rare blades are the characters that actually have unique looks here like telos or rock for example rock is a story one so you can't use an overdrive protocol on him he's like rex only same with like pyro being rex only and nia being rex only same thing for Bridget here being Morag only, Pandoria being Zeke only, all three forms of Poppy being Tora only, yada yada. But either when you awaken a blade, it'll give you one of these generic looking ones that are just like randomly generated. They have like random stats, stuff like that. They're just like generic things. But then rare blades here are like, like the predetermined things that actually have the unique art style and stuff like that. And those are what you want. 
You ruined your follow record again? Did you unfollow again, Carvia? What the heck? Oh, what's this gonna say now? All right, so today's June 28th. Following since 26 seconds ago. Previously subbed for four, mount four months. Nice. 20 bans, 999 plus messages. Nice, man. Nice, Carvia. <laughs> nice one. Oh, boy. So I have no idea what the heck my doggy wants. What is it? Hey, can you relax? <laughs> Dog. I'm kind of doing a stream at a stream at the moment. I don't know what you want from me right now. What do you need? You want to go up on the couch and relax or no? I mean, I could go check if she needs something quick. You know, I'll go check. I will be right back. Okay, she just really, really wanted to play. She went to the back door, so I was like, okay, maybe she has to be let out. Maybe she really has to go outside for a sec. And then I open the door, and then she walks like a few feet out, and then she just looks back at me, which is what she does when she just wants to play. She's like, are you going to come out and play with me? After the stream, I can. After this chapter, I can. Whoa, why does my volume feel off? This is the right headphone, right? This is the correct one. What happened to my volume? Okay, maybe it's normal after all. I, was, I don't know. But, but yeah, accidentally click the heart thing <laughs> to make it harder to unfollow. <laughs> oh, man. But yeah. Wonder if it's more like in the right side, because I only have the left side headphone for my capture card there for the game. So maybe it's more in the right side typically for the menus. What was I talking about? It's like echoey. What the heck happened? Is it like falling out the cord? What's going on here? Um, and Bearded comes out of nowhere. Why don't I have a full alert sound? This has been happening for a little while now. And the host to raid true combo. Oh, there's a raid sound, but not a host sound. Nobody expects the Spanish Inquisition. Nobody expects the Spanish Inquisition. I definitely was not expecting the Spanish Inquisition and I wasn't expecting it to be silent the first time. Apparently, and greetings from the barber shop is your raid message. My oh my. But thanks so much for the raid and the host. True combo there, bearded. I appreciate it. <laughs> what kind of raid message is this? Greetings from the barber shop. <laughs> what does it mean though? <laughs> does it have something to do? Is it a, meant to be like a beard pun? What's going on here? But yeah, I hope you had an awesome stream. Were you playing Smash Bros? Don't worry about it. Is that a. If you're saying don't worry about it, is I swear if it turns out to be a freaking joke about my long hair. But yeah. But yeah, were you streaming? Did I already ask this? Is that what you were answering? You streaming Smash? Because I saw you were live and... Okay, so it was a joke about Beard. Gotcha, gotcha. Because I saw you were live on Discord there and it was like, fight me or something like that was your stream title. I was like, oh, he's probably streaming Smash. I'd probably go and play against him if I wasn't going to start a stream myself. I wasn't even planning on streaming today. I was supposed to be out of town today. But then it was like, uh, joke's on you. We're going out tomorrow. So I was like, okay, we're going out tomorrow. Then I'm going to stream today since I won't be able to for close to a week <laughs> after this. So here I am streaming instead, instead of being away. But yeah, I was streaming casual smash. Disgusting. Gross. Gross, man. But yeah, so welcome everybody from Bearded Stream. I hope you had an awesome time there. I'm sure, I'm sure you did. Uh, but casual smash. Gross. We're doing some Xenoblade Chronicles 2 here. And yeah, we're about to 
go into one of the main story parts of the game, I guess. But first, I want to... Okay, this is a good team for Zeke here. Also, I think I can use a Geon on Morag, right? Yeah, a Geon's core crystal is unique is available now so as i was mentioning before i only just remembered this because of what we were talking about i was talking about how there are some blades that can only be used by some drivers a geon is one for morag so now there's a whole bunch of stuff i have to discuss but yeah, go to a barber shop to groom your beard or at least you're able to can't just groom it at home can't just do that <laughs> gonna hit you with that big lurk band <laughs> you can okay news to me i don't i don't wear a beard News to me now, but yeah, have a good lurk bearded. Anyway, uh, one of the things I should talk about <laughs> with Greece with the bathroom, I guess not. <laughs> but so one of the things I want to mention here is it's really interesting. Like Xenoblade Chronicles one and two are both really good at dropping really subtle little hints along the way about certain characters. Like, there's a whole bunch of subtle little hints in Xenoblade Chronicles 1 about Zanzen and the Monado, for example, stuff like that. Whereas in this game, there's a whole bunch of subtle little hints about Nia along the way. For example, like, in that last scene there, she was talking about how she didn't reveal herself as a, as a flesh eater with incredible healing abilities because she was afraid because last time people knew her to be a flesh eater, she was basically being hunted down is pretty much what happened. And she didn't want to go back to that life again. So, like, there was one Vandom was dying in Chapter 3 where it's, like, she took a couple steps forward. Like, I can save him. Like, I have the power to save him. But, like, and she just looks down and closes her fists like, no, I can't. I can't do that. I can't go back to that life of being hunted down for, like, my whole life. Stuff like that. So, Vandom wound up dying. And then Hayes wound up dying as well. And then the, it tore up Nia even more. And then there was Rex in danger at the end here. And that's where she finally decided that she wasn't going to be afraid of going back to that life anymore when was actually going to use her hidden power there to save save the people that she cares about like she's regretting letting these people die when she figures she can save them like with Morag's brother for example Emperor Nile when he was literally about to die after his bladed Geon had literally gone back to his core crystal signifying that he had died Drew Mark basically what <laughs> what the heck and another raid out of nowhere as well Scrooge champ, thanks so much for the raid. I don't know why my raids have sound and my host alerts don't, but thanks so much for the raid there. What up? What's up with you? Raid. I love seeing new faces around. What kind of stuff do you stream? Welcome. What kind of stuff do you stream, my dude? Tell me about yourself. I want to hear all. I love new faces. Tell me about it. Tell me about all the things. I love hearing about all the stuff and junk. What were you streaming? Variety stuff mainly, but where are you streaming this stream? This game or something else? Question marks. And hello, uh, I'm gonna say this correct, incorrectly, guaranteed. Alaran. It's it's gonna be incorrect, isn't it? I to I butcher all the names all the time. I'll have you know. But yeah, tonight you're just streaming team fight tactics. <laughs> tactics. It's a game where you go around taxing all the poor commoners. And. I see the haunt from host, the haunt from host, the host from haunt as well there, but the alert doesn't go through for that. But thanks as well for the host haunt. But yeah, see, saw you from my buddy bearded, great kid. Oh, nice. I love meeting new people through like other people that I know. Nice, nice. And I believe I met bearded through Nevermore, I believe it was. Freaking networks on Twitch are crazy. You want to see why? Because the notification for it is great. And it would have gone through if I didn't have that, like, turned off. Like, there were some cases where people would be doing that just for the sake of the alert when it wasn't a perfectly timed moment. Just in the middle of, like, nothing when they don't stream. So I was like, okay, I'm, I'm just going to disable that wow, now. And thanks for the follow awesome. as well, Scrooge Champ. I appreciate it. But yeah. Do you know anything about Xenoblade Chronicles? Or are you just coming in here like, oh, whoa, what's this? Lol, the end. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. That's why I go by Harmonia. Is N Harmonia. And that's the hat, you know? That's that. That's that. There. The, it's so hard to point at things. That hat. There. The one that I drew a while back. That's that. But yeah, you do fantastic game. Good. Good, good, because Xenoblade Chronicles is so good. We basically just got the third Aegis Sword here, so I was just, like, discussing stuff about that. And 
And yeah, and this volume is like so distant in my left ear and it's so weird. Um, <laughs> I forget what the heck we were talking about. We were having like a discussion. Oh yeah, we were talking about how like Nia was just revealed as a blade and like all that was coming together now. Also, before I forget, I need a freaking boopity boppity and a uh, boopity bop. Because I typically forget about this stuff. Otherwise, anyway, boopity bop. Boopity bop. Bam. I see new faces and I know new people are streamers. I got to freaking follow them as well. There, before I forget, because I always forget later. <laughs> it's typically what happens. So I just have to do it before I forget midstream. Don't mind me. Um. So yeah, so there was Nia who was just revealed as a blade then. So I was talking about how she finally decided to use her power, though somewhat in secret, on Niall. And he was literally about to die considering a Geon went back to his core crystal. And I forgot about it, but he gives a Geon's core crystal to Morag for her to awaken a Geon, which we can do now since we've walked enough steps. I guess I wasn't paying enough attention to whenever the game apparently notified me that it was available for me to use right now. But yeah, a Geon's a Morag exclusive blade. Also, I love the sound of that sleeve movement. Like, listen to that. Like, reaching out there and ready to, like... I don't know why it's so satisfying. It's just such a freaking good sleeve sound. That's way more satisfying than it should be. But yeah, <laughs> like somebody didn't have to do that. I love meeting new faces. I love meeting new streamer to streamer friends and stuff like that. Har the Harmonia Courtesy follow the newcomers if they stream. Yeah, pretty much. I literally have a panel in my description that says streamers where it's like, hey, are you a streamer? Well, growing on Twitch is hard. So tell me about your stream. Tell me about what you do. And let's like talk about it and stuff like that. Like I literally, I literally love that kind of thing, man. I love finding new streamers and stuff like that. Cause I used to, I used to, my original way that I used to find new streamers was by browsing around the directories and trying to find people with good commentary where I'd like, go through the full directory of like a game that I play or enjoy. And thanks for the follow as well, Aloran, if I'm saying that right. Aloran, Aloran, something like that, I don't know. But that's what you've been trying to do as well. Yeah, like I'll sometimes do that where I'll go through directories of games that I play. And I typically won't even click on the stream if they have into the double digits or more viewers. Like, I especially want to try to find, like, newer streamers. Because I remember when I was, like, a brand new streamer who had zero viewers every single stream for, like, a month. Something like that. And it's like, oh, man, I wish somebody was around here. Where it's just like, I want to find people like that. And I typically don't say anything in their streams. I'll pretty much just lurk, drop a follow, and then, like, never show up again until I raid them one day. Where after a stream, I'll look at my follow list and it's like, here's a list of people to raid. And if I see somebody I've never raided before, it's like, oh... I must have followed them in the past because they're like a small streamer and they have good commentary. So I'll throw them a raid and then potential new streamer friends. But that hasn't been like one that's a lot of time that I don't actually have a lot of nowadays that it takes to do that. And I haven't actually met a lot of people through that. There have been some awesome streamers I've met through that. A good example is Ketson Gesture. He's an awesome streamer and we've actually recently started doing like Stardew Valley multi streams together, which has been super fun. But that's like the best example of me doing that out of like doing that for close to a year something like that most people there we basically never have anything develop into something like that unfortunately but but yeah i initially that was my way that i did it like one of my motivations was doing that and trying to find smaller streamers like where they don't even go into the double digits number of viewers i especially try to look out for zero viewer streamers because I think of myself just starting out initially, and I want to be, I want to help give somebody a chance that I never had, you know? Now that I have like a little bit of a community here, stuff like that, I want to be able to help somebody else have this chance that if I were in their position, I would love that so much. Like back when I was like a new streamer, back when I was streaming for like a month to like zero viewers consistently, if there was somebody that like rated me for like three viewers or something like that even and nobody stuck around except for the streamer themselves who just wanted to say hi even that would mean so much to me because like there's so many streamers who are just like oh a raid i guess you threw your viewers to me like thanks and then just move on with your life whereas really it's like there's literally hundreds of thousands of other streamers all at once and you're like the streamer that they chose to support out of everybody like that means something that's a that's, I don't know, but I'm kind of 
changing subjects to like the perspective of the person getting raided a little bit there but anyway back to the original subject of that's the thing that i used to do to find new people was browse directories and look for smaller streamers that have good commentary like that but i start finding less and less and i started getting really discouraged i would spend like an hour going through a whole bunch of ones and it'd just be people who'd be playing like Oh, oh, there's someone in chat. Haunt SSB underscore YT. Hi, Mr. YT. How are you today? How, how you doing? Huh? There's something. No, I'm, I'm taking this a bit too far. I don't know. I was like, I don't know. But I find so many streamers where it's just like, why do you even have a webcam if you're not going to say anything? And it pisses me off. But... But I do like meeting people through that, but that one I don't really have a whole lot of time to be doing that nowadays So I haven't done it in a while and I also was like getting such bad luck from it Like I had some decent luck at first. I found some really cool people through that, but they're so hard to find like Like there's so many zero viewer streamers who are like awesome streamers who totally deserve to have like a bit of a following and be able to like take off past where they are but the problem is they're surrounded by so many people who don't you know like really have their heart into it that it's so hard to find the people who really care about what they're doing is from what i found from my experience so it's like so much to freaking sift through to get to the good ones like like, I feel bad saying that, like, a lot of zero viewer streamers are there because maybe they deserve to be, but that's the way that it is for a lot of people. And then there's other zero viewer streamers who are awesome streamers who have great commentary and are wonderful people, but the reason that they can't grow is because they're surrounded by so much of this other stuff that people just consider to be, like, the collective of zero viewer streamers, you know? That's the way I see it. So, it's unfortunate for, like, the people that really have their hearts into it, you know? But... But yeah, and sorry that I didn't read that stuff out before. I freaking start ranting about something and then I don't address the stuff there. But yeah, that's the way you've made a lot of friends. I hear just randomly checking people out. Yeah, the only big one for me for that would be Ketson probably. Most of the people that I've met now is through like other people's streams. And that's the way that I'm like continuing to do that is either through other people's streams or something that I was doing for a little while in Dead by Daylight is if I was playing against people that I knew were streamers I would devote myself to making them laugh as best I could, to making them have as good a time as possible, and doing the craziest stuff that they'd never expect to see in that game. I've met a couple cool streamers through that, like GremXD is a good example. I was playing on my own one day, I wasn't even streaming, I was playing Dead by Daylight as Killer, and I saw that somebody who had Twitch in their name was in my lobby, so I loaded up her stream, and I basically had a game where I devoted myself to making her laugh as best I could by doing all kinds of crazy 360 shenanigans that nobody in their right mind would ever do in the game if they were trying to seriously win. So I would freaking 360 every single swing. I would... There was a whole bunch of stuff I'd do. She'd hop into a locker and I'd pretend that I didn't know where she was and then like slowly turn towards the locker and then leave. Or like I'd down somebody on the ground and then go onto the roof of Haddonfield and just stare into the sky and have Billy start revving his chainsaw and then start spinning as he starts revving. Like just the craziest stuff you'd never expect anyone to do. So through that I've met some awesome streamers, but I kind of gave up on doing that too. Because most people don't look behind them when they run when they play that game, so they don't even see the stuff that I'm doing. They just see that I'm missing and they assume I'm bad, and a lot of the streamers will even trash talk after the game. Like, wow, you're missing all the swings. How are you this high of rank? It's like, jeez, you, you calling me bad there proves that you don't look behind you to see what I was doing. Oh, man. And there was one time that, there was one time that streamers actually reported me for doing what I was doing. They were upstairs in this building, so I stood at like the entrance so that they couldn't leave, and I start revving the chainsaw and I start spinning like crazy to make it seem funny. Like, haha, I've trapped you, you can't escape, and I was spinning like crazy. Whereas these this streamer and like the other people he was with, he's just like, man, this guy's body blocking us in. We should probably report him. We should probably report him to the dev. So after the game, I didn't get them to laugh a single time despite 360 in the entire game, and after the game, they go and report me. And I come into the stream and after like, whoa, wait, what? I was trying to make you laugh, man. He was like, well, that seemed pretty toxic to me. The guy was like, I'm like, what the heck was I doing that made 
made it seem report worthy. So <laughs> there's cases like that, but most cases people don't notice. So I kind of gave up on doing that too. So, I mean, it's just so hard to find other streamers that I like in general. <laughs> Like, when it comes to, like, randomly through directories, that is. Whether it's, like, a random person I'm playing against in DBD or I'm just browsing through the directories. It's so hard to find them, man. And they're out there. They're just so hard to find because of all the clutter. But, yeah. And, yeah, sorry. I've been reading this stuff out of my head. I just haven't been reading it out loud. And, yeah, DBD is really fun. I've actually been working on some DBD guides lately. I'm going to be working this weekend on a super long palette guide that I might have to divide into part one and part two so I don't have a video that's like over an hour long but yeah um the, the, the words finding someone who's a passionate great streamer who's at a low following is probably as rare as a lottery win I know right like maybe not that hard but still really freaking hard like it's so I don't even know how to express it. I've I tried to do it for like so long but Nowadays, I don't do it anymore because like one, I'm either like working in Taekwondo or streaming or editing a video. One of those things. Like, I don't really have the time to be doing that. Otherwise, like I have such a backlog of stuff that I need to stream through and edit through. I don't have like the time for that nowadays when it comes to doing that. I might have a little bit of time this weekend since I'll be out of town and not able to stream. But, but the times where I would do it, most of the times I would spend like an hour and a half to two hours like browsing through. And if I was lucky, I'd find one person. Is how it started being towards the end before I quit. So that was around the end-ish of last year that I stopped doing that. Because I just started getting discouraged. I was like, man, <laughs> screw this. <laughs> so I guess maybe I don't make as much of an effort to make new friends around here anymore. But whenever I see some like a new face raiding me, for example, it's like, new friend potential. What do you stream? How long have you been streaming? What are you passionate about? Speaking of, Scooch Champ, how long have you been a streamer? <laughs> that's, that's a question I usually ask people that I forgot to forget. That I forgot to forget? That I forgot to ask. Freaking words. But yeah, out of thousands and thousands of people, only 15 appeal to you as streamers. You made tons of friends through Twitch and Smash Bros. Still, it's hard because because you're friends with those you found through streamers and chats. It's hard, man. I know, right? I just meet people. Like you and Champ who share the same sentiment. Yeah, it's so hard to find people nowadays. Started streaming with Injustice 2 when you were trying to get really good. Like at that as a fighting game. How long ago was that? Because I started streaming in the beginning of February of last year of 2018. Yeah, I, for I forgot to forget. Don't mind me. Also, uh, I forgot to do this before. So let's go ahead and freaking awaken a Geon, which is more eggs, other unique, unique blade. <laughs> Speech 100. <laughs> Oh, so it wasn't even starting out with streaming that. It was just... It was just like playing it, trying to get good at it. Then your friends really wanted to start streaming just because, so here you are. Nice! I guess I'll turn the camera off for this. This isn't really that much of a story scene, but I'll do it anyway. There's one thing I really hate about a Geon here. He looks way too much like a regular blade. My name is Egeon. Screw you, Egeon. If you could look... Not so much like a regular blade. That would be fantastic. Let my sword be your sword. But instead, you just look like a freaking slightly more toned up version of like a regular blade. Anyway, um, so yeah, there's another one of Morag's Hello unique there. blades. Is those two? Um, <laughs> okay, wait. What I want to be doing on my team setup here? I don't know. But I was talking about how you use core crystals and it just uses it from the stand. What the heck is? Look at Zeke's robes. What the heck? He has no face. Well, he has a face. It's just, he looks like a regular blade, kind of. Like. Yeah, he he literally just. What the heck was that? Was that my desktop? Is it trying to, like, update or something? Anyway, like, freaking look at this. A Geon? Hold on. A Geon? Regular blade. Regular looking blades. Then a Geon. Like, he does look fancier than them, but he just looks like a toned, slightly toned up version of, like, one of these common blades that are, like, the randomly generated ones. So, screw you, Aegeon. <laughs> man, oh man. But he's a pretty good dodge tank, which is good on Morag there. But, yeah, so what elements am I looking for here? If I want to have, like, one of every element. First of all, let's change Nia back to a blade here. Yeah, he just looks revamped is all it is. Sucks, man. Showtime. 
don't expect me to do everything for you. I think when I took that break earlier, I think these headphones are now properly broken. These headphones were partially broken before. The right one doesn't work at all. Only the left one, which is why I used it for my capture card because I only use one headphone anyway because my capture card doesn't have a volume adjustment knob. So I have one headphone for the game and one for my PC for like alert box. So because the right one here already doesn't work, because this one doesn't work, I figured the left one here would die at some point. Now the left one is like half volume and like distant. Um, These were like my only other like functioning pair of headphones and like only the left ones. Um, I mean, I guess I can still use them if need be. I just don't really want to listen to the game like that. I uh, I think I have like the, some headphones here. If these work. So these headphones here are the same as the ones that I'm using here. Like they're the same, same type as headphones. And I really quite like these ones before they died, which is why I got these ones that are working now. But the thing is, they... They lasted me over a year, but the reason why they stopped working and they started not working mostly on my phone, they still worked on my computer, was this bit here where like that rubber bit is normally supposed to stay on the end. It came off and then they started bending more and more. And as the wire started bending, it the sound started going a bit crazy on my phone. It still worked okay on my PC. So I was still using these for streaming for a little while when it came to my desktop. Let's hope that it's only my phone that they had problems with and let's... Plug it into my capture card and <laughs> see what we got here. Um, sounds better than the other ones, I think. Hold on. Sounds a little bit funky. I might need to get some more new headphones one of these days. Well, I mean, I could always, I could always plug the ones that are plugged into the desktop into the capture card. And then use my actual like headset headphones for the computer, but then I'd have to have like an earbud going under the headset and like do that. And oh, that does not feel comfortable at all with the earbuds on. That does not feel good at all. Let's how about not do that? It's probably not a good place to put the headset, is it? <gasps> not a good idea at all. Um, I'm gonna work with this, I guess. What are we talking about again? Let's talk about a Geon some more. But yeah, regular blade, Final Fantasy 7. <laughs> Geon Final Fantasy 7 remake. That's literally like the best example there. Like regular blades. A Geon! <laughs> That's literally it. Anyway, if I want to have one of every element, what do I need here? Alright, so I hold on, let's put Rock oh, back on. Since these are since those are the three rare blades I have on Rex right now, if you don't include Pyra, which I'm not going to include. Because this is New Game Plus, and canonically, she's not supposed to be part of the party right now. But yeah, the live struggles on stream. I should just pick up another pair of headphones. Like, I did pick up a nice new pair of headphones recently for my phone. But they're like fancy schmancy wireless ones. So I can't exactly use these while I'm streaming. They're only synced to my phone. I really like them, but I can't really use them here. Is the thing. I have to use the wired ones for here. I've tried using my wireless. These are these are wireless. I can make them wired by plugging them into my computer, but mostly I use them wireless. I've tried using these wirelessly while streaming before. It messes with my stream audio and I don't know why. So yeah, I mean, they might work if I figure out how to get wireless stuff working with my PC there, but these only sync to one device at a time. So I'd have to like remove them as a device that my phone remembers and then add them later and like add them to my desktop. And I don't want to do that. I just want these to be like my phone earbuds. Um, let's try to have at least one of every element. So there's eight elements and we have three drivers that each have three blades. So that's nine blades. So we can have two of one element. So we're currently doubling up on water and we're doubling up on darkness. So we're missing one thing. We're missing ice, right? Oh, I can easily fill ice. I can do that easily. Bam. I hope I won't disappoint. That's another dodge tank blade there. So we have all the pairs then, right? All the pairs of elements. We have fire water. Um, we have ice and wind. We have light and darkness. And we have electric and... Oh, I need earth. Oh, dang it. I have two of darkness. Do I have something earth on Zeke? Do I have an earth blade I can give to Zeke? No, I don't. How about I use an overdrive protocol? Who's a good earth blade that I can give to Zeke as an attacker? Maybe... Oh, what's his name? The freaking monster dude. Um, also, Nia's missing from here because she's a blade right now, so she can't... 
you know. Yeah, when we were talking about the offshoot made you want a pair, not gonna lie. Yeah, I really like my headphones there. I really like my wireless earbuds there. Uh, Wolfric is his name. Uh, who are other Earth Blades? I could give him Agate for a great axe. So he'd be wielding his crazy unique Buster Sword-like thing from Pandoria. He has the Ether Cannon from Cosmos, and then... Yeah, he can either have Spear for Smash or... Wait, what does he have if he uses an axe instead? Is the thing. So if I have him use a great axe right here, then he gets topple, which is interesting. And if I have him use a spear, he gets a smash. I don't think I, yeah, there's nobody else on the team with topple right now. So I should give him a great axe. So I should probably give him agate. Buster sword like thing. Yeah, the thing that Pandoria has there. Like it doesn't look like that right now, but the massive blade that he has, that he typically has around. Like if I change order here, That, the freaking Buster Sword-like thing, where once he activates it, the blade actually comes out of that massive aperture there, and such. Yeah, use that blade just for the sword design. I was using Zeke earlier, but now I'm gonna go to Rex, now that we can use Nia. Anyway, I'm gonna freaking use one of my limited overdrive protocols. How do I... Wait, how many overdrive protocols do I have? I have 12, which is a decent amount. So there's a limited amount that you can get by doing things like maxing out a driver's affinity chart and stuff like that, or getting them from certain chests around the world. The only other way to get overdrive protocols is if you have a four star regular blade. So like this one, like these ones here are three star. You can see at the bottom right there, like the amount of crowns. If you have a four star blade, finally it's my turn. You completely, oh, that's the wrong thing. You completely max out their affinity chart, so unlock every single node, like you 100% them, and then you release them, you get rid of them. That's how you get additional overdrive protocols. That's how hard it is to get them in this game. Don't so, expect me to do everything for you. So, they're kind of, like, they're technically unlimited, but they're like the hardest thing ever to get. Pretty much. I, yeah. But yeah, it does kind of look a bit like the Buster Sword. A little Buster Sword will never be beaten for favoritism. Still your favorite, all-time favorite sword from now until the end of time. Forever. So I'm pretty sure Agate is the only great axe. Earthblade. Oh, dang it. Look at all these freaking standard ones I have. Gross. So yeah, so she's currently on Morag. Let's use Overdrive Protocol to give her to Zeke. There. I'm pretty sure that overdrive product protocols aren't canon to this story because in the story it's like driver awakens the blade and once the driver dies then the blade dies too if overdrive protocols were a thing canon to the story then like blades could just be immortal by using overdrive protocols and switching from driver to driver whatever they so please or something like that so they pretty much just included overdrive protocols just as a way for you to actually be able to change your team around like that because otherwise you have to release that blade and then just hope that you get them again after releasing them by bonding blade here. So, so yeah, I'm fairly certain that overdrive protocols aren't canon to being like a thing that exists in this world. Like it doesn't make sense to the story that they're telling. They're just like a quality of life thing that exists there. But yeah, look at all those Final Fantasy seven blades. Exactly, man. But yeah, so in the regular game, I have every blade. So the regular game goes up to Dahlia there. Um, and in New Game Plus, it adds the ability to get blades that are aligned with Torna, which I didn't do until this point because I didn't want to accidentally spoil things. Like, there are some where it doesn't really matter that much. Like, there are some that I already have here. Like, for example, this is the blade that Malus had at the beginning of the game, who we defeated in Chapter 3 after Mithra came out. These were the blades that Mikhail and Petroka had, uh, respectively, in Chapter 4 for the boss there. Uh, this was the blade that Akos had, for example, up until chapter 3 when we had defeated them both. So, like, canonically, they're dead, but, you know, they're here just because. And in the last chapter, at the end of chapter 6, we found out that basically all the characters that go under the banner of Torna are blades as well, or more specifically, flesh eaters. So, like, when I first started New Game Plus here, like, this was over a year ago. 
This was, yeah, definitely over a year ago when I was streaming this and I was like, okay, I'm actually going to do story Xenoblade 2 stuff. I started my first new game plus. I was like, oh dang, I forgot to have some more blades on Rex than I currently have. I want to have some more diversity. So I opened a core crystal and because it was new game plus, immediately it gave me Akos and was like spoilers for the fact that he's a blade. And I was like, oh, come on, man. But like, we didn't continue with that playthrough back then anyway. Like, that wasn't quite where I was going as a streamer at that point. But now we're ready to be doing this kind of stuff. And now that it's been revealed in the, at the end of last chapter that Akos is a blade, we don't have to worry about that anymore. I think I did, I might have actually released Akos before starting this new game plus, so as not to accidentally spoil that. Do I have him here? Or did I release him and I have to get him again? I think I did. Yes, no, maybe so. I don't see him here. Yeah, I think I released him before starting this new game plus. Because the new me streaming this now was smarter. And I was like, let's not prematurely reveal the fact that Akos is a blade. But yeah, these, these Torna blades here, they added the seven Torna blades is what they added here. So there's like the three or the four, sorry, like regular blades that they had that were on their sides for uh, Malos, Mikhail, Petroka, and Akos. And then the three blades that they add here are Akos, Petroka, and Mikhail. Like, you can see Mikhail's outline there and Petroka's outline there. It's a little bit sad that you can't use Jin or Malos. That would have been really cool. But alas, I guess we can't all have everything that we want. But yeah, so in the regular game, I have all the blades unlocked. Now that I don't have to worry about spoiling the fact that they're blades, I can probably open some more core crystals to try to get those guys if I wanted to. Um, and they added some more blades here. That... And I want to actually get these. There are some ones like this one where it's like you can get them as part of like side quests in New Game Plus. So after we finish chapter 8 of this series, before continuing with chapter 9, I actually want to do some New Game Plus specific stuff. Getting like these new blades from New Game Plus. Like this guy here, I've never used him before because he's a New Game Plus blade, but his name's Corvin. He's like a dodge tank with a light element. And he's apparently one of the strongest blades in the game and is completely busted. And it's like, use him if you don't want to play the game ever again because the game is just going to like annihilate everything for you. I'm going to move this camera up a little bit. So maybe I wouldn't be using him because he's apparently too strong. But, but yeah, after... After chapter 8, I would like to take a little bit of a break from the story and do this new stuff with New Game Plus because I've never done it before. I don't have them. I haven't done this New Game Plus stuff before, so it's a little bit new to me. Like, I know what it is, but I've never tried it out firsthand. So we get some new faces like this, and we might even see some familiar faces here and there. But as for the ones that are in the regular pool there, I could, I could try popping open a few core crystals here. See if we get, like... You know, Petroka or something like that. Because I've been avoiding Awakening Blades so far in this playthrough. Like, mostly because I didn't want to accidentally awaken, like, Petroka or something like that. And spoil the fact that she's a blade. Like, her being on our side here isn't canon at all. Considering, you know, with Torna there. So this is, all this New Game Plus stuff isn't canon, like, one sec. Like, one bit. Why did I say one sec? But, but now I don't have to worry about freaking, wait, what element is she? I forget. I forget which one of these would like boost the chances of getting her. I'll probably just open a few of these is all. But now I don't have to worry about spoiling the fact that those guys are freaking blades because it was revealed in the last chapter. So I don't have to worry about like holding out on awakening stuff anymore. So usually throughout playthroughs, you'll be seeing a lot of like blade awakening because, you know, you need blades. Oh, this is a unique blade. Who's this? Oh, I got Sever. It's Sever's turn to wreak untold havoc. So yeah, I must have released him too. So yeah, this was Malice's blade at the beginning of the game. So at the beginning of the game, so like in chapter one up until three, when like he died, this was the blade that Malice was using, who's like a wind tank. Falling, they'll get slapped. Got it? He reminds me of Mumkar. <laughs> Something interesting about all the all seven of the Torna blades. So yeah, I released him because I didn't want to accidentally spoil that like you know they're a thing. So I think I released most of the Torna blades before starting this there. But yeah, yeah, we're gonna do new game plus things like challenge mode and stuff like that. But 
But yeah, so I had him once before and then I must have released him, which is why he wasn't in the thing there. But something interesting about the seven Torna blades. Yeah, it looks like I only have the three of them here. Uh, you can't actually put core chips on them. So core chips are the things that change like the auto attack damage, the block rate, the critical rate, stuff like that. Those stats down there. You can't put core chips on them. So these, these blades are just stuck with like the base stats that they have. Which aren't too bad, but it's not as good as like the end game stuff that you'd have otherwise. But they're still not bad. And with blades like a Brona who are freaking crazy with their arts, it can be nice. But yeah, was that Shulk? Wait, 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 go back. Whoops. Well, I guess we'll just have to find on out. But first of all, the first important note about the New Game Plus stuff with these new blades is it's not canon. Like, the Torna blades never come on your side. So, like, we might we might see some interesting faces here. Some, some faces from some other games, potentially. But it's not canon. It'd be really cool if it was canon. But... But we might see some some interesting faces there. Let's save here. All right, so I set up my team. So wait, wait, wait. I need to put the what's her face on Zeke. Did I already? Agate. I need to put Agate on Zeke. That's what I have to do. I hope I'll live up to your expectations. So yeah, I already have darkness on Rex. So now I should have every elemental pair. So I have fire, water, uh, ice, wind, um, light and darkness with Rex, and then electric and earth. All right, I have one of every element and I've doubled up on water with a Geon and Nia then. I show Fior and the other lady, forget her name. The last silhouette that I showed there isn't from Xenoblade Chronicles 1, she's from Xenoblade Chronicles X, I'll just say. So it's like an ultra crossover. At least not canon, that'd break you. There are some theories that people have formulated where it's like, out, it could out. be canon if in this, and this and this and this and this and this. And they put like a bunch of stuff together and it's like, maybe, but probably not. And it has nothing to do with the story. This is all new game plus stuff. So I think it's really cool how come they out, included out. stuff like in that. For I know quite like, a bit. take Xenoblade Chronicles 1, for example, where it's like, what's new to new game plus? You can use the true Monado throughout the game. That's basically it. That's basically, you basically just have the true Monado through the whole thing. Whereas, New Game Plus in Xenoblade Chronicles 2 here, which is something that was added with with a DLC, which by the way, like this DLC was like 30 bucks Canadian, so like 20 bucks-ish American, something like that. Most worth it expansion pass I've ever played in my life, honestly. Like, it is so good. Like, New Game Plus alone adds so much. Like... It adds a whole bunch of stuff that they didn't even say would be added. Like, hold on. The stuff that they... Added, yeah, there's potential for it being canon. And there's, like, maybe a little bit of a hint that it might be. If you want to, like, really stretch things. Maybe. But probably not. I think the devs intended for it to be not canon, though. You're now shattered. But, yeah, when they... When they first released Xenoblade 2 and we're talking about the expansion pass, they were like, oh, there's gonna be new blades, which at first just meant these seven, which was the seven, like, Torna blades was all. And then as it can, then they continued to make more stuff and they were like, surprise, here's another blade, Telos, which was actually, which was actually available to everyone. You don't actually need to own the DLC to have Telos. She's available to everyone. Plus another new blade that we didn't say that you'd be able to get, but surprise, here you go. Here's another one. And then also out of nowhere, they add a whole new mode called challenge mode, where it's like, wow, you can get some characters here in challenge mode, like those three. I think that you need to do like a different side quest that they added a new game plus to get Corvin, I think. And then cross set was another new game plus one that they added that just goes into like the general pool of like blades that you can get. So it's like, ha, surprise, here's a bunch of new stuff that we didn't say was going to be included, but you have now. And they add like so much stuff, like you being able to adjust the difficulty to however you want. Like for with me turning up the enemy maximum HP up to max because I freaking annihilate everything because of, you know, is this by default on max? Because I'm pretty sure I didn't change anything else. But yeah, back's broken, neck snap, broke your wrist again from hearing that that might be canon. It's probably not. Things are falling out of my shelf here. What the heck? 
it's almost certainly not canon and it definitely doesn't have anything to do with the story that's being told here but if you want to like really stretch things it's not impossible i don't know but yeah we'll be doing some of that new game plus stuff after we've been ranting here for a while haven't we there's just too many things to talk about huh um let's fast travel out to the left to the left here in archipelago so now we have nia but yeah i want to do this new game plus stuff before finishing off the game because i think it would be great to finish off the game with these new characters that are added in new game plus that we saw the silhouettes of there you know i think it'd be awesome to finish the game with them even if they have nothing to do with the story it'd be awesome to finish the game with them you know but i don't want to do them in the middle of a chapter because it's like we're in the middle of story stuff here and then like there's a break in the middle of the chapter and then that happens so i want to do it in between chapters at the end of chapter 7, which is this current one, there's a bit of a cliffhanger, so it's like, oh, I don't want to leave it there either. But at the end of chapter 8, it's like stuff is going on, but you don't need to actively know what happens next. So it's like, okay, after chapter 8 is when we'll do it. Because then we can take a break from story stuff in general and just relax with New Game Plus stuff for a little bit, is my idea. And then we'll do the last two chapters with this new stuff that we get in New Game Plus, is what we'll do. Like, even though they're not canon, we're totally gonna do that because... That would be the most fitting to the end of this series, you know? Who'd have thought that Nia was a blade too? Why didn't you tell us, Nia? I just didn't, okay? No, it's not okay! <sighs> you lot really are just children, aren't you? Huh? What do you mean? You'll understand one day. Hey, you know, me, Rex, Nia, we've all got some kind of deep blade connection going on with us, haven't we? To tell the truth, I am a little envious, Lady Morag. You know, I'm sure it could be arranged. Would it leave a scar? That's kind of part of the bargain. In that case, maybe not. No, that's not what I meant. It's just... Oh. <laughs> Relax. Much as I appreciate the sentiment, I wouldn't want you to harm yourself. I am sorry. Anyway, what do we do now? It's all well and good that we escaped, but we've got nothing to show for it. Don't worry. I know where we have to go. Are you sure, Rex? You know Pyra's location? I think so. Near the World Tree. I see a rotten titan. She's there. A rotting titan? Could it be? What is it? Morag knows such a place? Close by the world tree, against the side of the Great Void, I've heard there's a titan known as the Cliffs of Moritha. Moritha? That name sounds familiar. Lady Morag, there are tales. Tales of a land of the dead, and the cliffs that lead into its depths. Yes, indeed. The land of Moritha. A place no living soul has ever witnessed. Well then. Mick, you here again? Is it passion or idiocy? Patroka. Just ask me out already. Piss off and die, Mech. Oh, I'm sure I'll get around to it one of these days. So, what are you doing anyway? You know, the Marsanis is the last torn in warship. I'm readying it for battle with non-mortal opponents. What are you talking about, non-mortal? <laughs> Surely you don't need me to tell you. You don't mean... 
Something wrong? Uh... Did you want something? Oh, uh, food's ready. Get it while it's hot. You came all the way here to tell me that? You've got quite the crush. Mikhail, I'm gonna crush your... Okay, got it. Well, I'd better go and eat this delicious spread. Mick? So what are they preparing that Torn Battleship for? Non-mortal opponents, huh? Alrighty. Now the question is, how are we getting to the Cliffs of Martha? I doubt just any sailor would be willing to give us a ride there. Yeah, I reckon they're not going to be keen on getting that close to the World Tree. In that case, I will charter a military vessel. It may not be the most efficient route, but it will be reliable, I can assure you that much. That's our special inquisitor thingy! Special Inquisitor. Some might consider this an abuse of my pri privileges, you know. So, are we headed to the port at Hardhag Palace in Moardain? Yes. Bridget, would you send word ahead that we are coming? How? Of course, Lady Morag, leave it to me. Right, then let's get moving. Alrighty, so off to Moardain we go then. Uh, this button. And then we can go to the Cliffs of Moritha to wrap up this chapter then. Uh, more Ardain, the palace, and yeah, let's go wrap up this chapter. This is what we're gonna do. Let's rest the spell. We must go up. So, take the elevator. Boopity bop. Yeah, this will be my party setup for now. Why ever not? Nia is so glowy. I love it! Up, up and away! Jeez, how long is this? Aha! Aha! Aha, zigzag, then love- Wait, is the sword fixed now, by the way? Nope! Why does the sword look like that? What the heck happened to it? Why is it all glitchy and weird? Is that- It's not the cord chip that's on it, is it? Did the cord chip on it? Do that or something? Oh, maybe it wasn't a glitch. Or a Calcum Scimitar. Oh. Oh. It wasn't a glitch after all. I'm just big dumb. Apparently. Is there anything better I can give to it here? I'm gonna reduce my block rate, but I don't really need my block rate up. Oh, that's a freaking moon matter chip. Scimitar of banishing. Whoa, 875. Sunlight chip. Cool, man. Oh, that's the ultimate block rate chip that I don't really want to, like, use any of us. Use any of. 892. Oh my goodness, look at that. Let's do it. Make myself even more busted just because I don't like the look that it had before. I can't believe I thought that- look how glowy it is now. Okay, yeah, I'm just big dumb. I... Not realizing that that was the core chip that made it look like that. Alright, now we have like a little tint of red to it on the front and stuff. Is what we've got what going on now. Nice. Very nice. Alrighty. Lady Morag, we have been expecting you. You have heard my business here, I presume. We require passage to the Cliffs of Martha. Yes, ma'am. All the preparations are- blah, blah, the words! The preparations are all complete. I doubt this will be an easy voyage. Are you sure you're up to it? Absolutely, ma'am! By order of His Majesty the Emperor, only the finest of sailors have been gathered for this assignment. I'll have to thank him for that later. Well then, shall we depart? As you wish! Absolutely. 